Welcome back for part two of the Honda Pilot Front Brakes. All right, so now we're gonna mount the lathe's frame onto the wheel hub. So we'll first separate the frame from the tool bed with a half inch socket. Then I'm gonna use a 916 socket to swap the support link so that the link with the open end will be mounted on the lower part of the hub. Okay, so I'm going to mount the frame to the hub with a couple M12 by 1.25 inch thread pitch by 45 millimeter long hex bolts and nuts. I've turned the wheel to the left for easier access. Not having the Honda adapter available, it took about a half hour to mount the lathe's frame exactly centered on the wheel hub. Here are some images from the passenger side where it was more precise in how I mounted the lathe. Basically I measured the distance from the top side of the lathe by holding a ruler flat up against it, then moving the end of the ruler towards the hub until it made contact. I repeated this process on the bottom side of the lathe, continuing to make adjustments until the two measurements were nearly the same. The mounting nuts and bolts should then be tightened to 40 foot-pounds with a 19mm socket and a wrench. I later added a washer under the head of the lower mounting bolt to ensure the nut and the end of the bolt would not hit the rotor. Moving on to the tool bed, I line the two cutting bits so they'll be centered on the brake disc and even with each other by loosening the hex screws with a 532nd hex key. If a bit's corner that will be doing the cutting has a chip, the bit can be unscrewed then rotated to a new corner. If all three corners are chipped, the bit should be replaced. I adjusted both bit holder arms so they'd be flush with the edge of the tool bed. Next, I'll mount the tool bed in the frame, centering it on the brake disc and square in the frame.
right, so this is just about centered, and I'm going to tighten the bolt down underneath here, half inch. Checking for square. Distance from here to here should be the same as it is from here to here. Off camera, I turn the knobs clockwise until the cutting bits touch the edge of the rotor. Then I turn them a couple more lines. Each line on the knobs is 0.002 inches. Then I tighten the bit holder bolt on top of the tool bed with a half inch wrench. I spun the rotor by hand to knock down the raised edge. The bolt on top of the tool bed should be loosened again. Here you see that the tool bed bits are close to the rotor's hat. I then turned the knobs until the cutting bits came in contact with the rotor. Each pass with the lathe should be made to a depth of no more than 0.008 inches, which equates to turning the knobs four lines clockwise. If I remember correctly, I started with 0.004 inches, or two lines on the knobs. The bolt on top of the tool bed should then be tightened again with a half inch wrench. The support inch for the motor is already attached to the frame, and it's done by removing the two bolts underneath the frame near the hand wheel with the 7 16 wrench, then the hinge is mounted with the same bolts. Here's the motor mounted on the frame. Next, the small belt for the motor is installed in the smallest pulley groove on the motor and the largest pulley groove on the hand wheel. This will give the slowest feed rate and the best possible surface finish. I made sure the rotor was turned off then plugged it into 120 volt power. Alright, we're ready to go so I started the car and let the engine warm to normal operating temperature. The parking brake is off and I'm going to shift the car into first gear. So I have my feet hanging outside the car to not inadvertently press the brake pedal. Then I turn on the feed motor and here it goes. My neighbor also stopped by to watch the festivities. Once the cutting finished and the bits cleared the rotor, I turned off the lathe's motor. I then turned off the car without putting my foot on the brake pedal. I didn't have the cutting bits quite set up correctly, so the inside of the rotor was not cut like the outside. I ended up going another pass or two, adjusting the bits closer by a couple lines, or 0.004 inches each time.
Okay, we're all finished on this side, so I'm removing the lathe from the wheel. Then I wipe the rotor with brake cleaner. Here's the final rotor thickness on the driver's side. We went from around 27.09 millimeters to 26.54 millimeters, which is above the 26 millimeter limit. Here's the final rotor thickness on the passenger side at 26.89 millimeters.